Aaron Afrati has a vision to open a boxing club which will commemorate his great grandfather. What may seem at first to be a trivial gesture opens the door to a fascinating story about the darkest time in history. I think there should be a club that will carry his legacy and commemorate his life story, such as the time he hurt his leg but didn't leave the boxing ring, or his Jewish identity which he kept and preserved even during times it destroyed everything for him, his values like family, I think all of these will make the club more unique. In 2010, Leona's son immigrated to Israel from Italy and moved to the coastal city of Ashkelon. He gave us a rare glimpse of his life story. Five maschies. My father came from a big Jewish family. He was one of seven siblings. When he was 15 years old, he started to practice boxing. In the mid-1930s, Leone became one of the top boxers in Italy, going 11 bouts undefeated. He even caught the attention of the son of Italy's fascist ruler, Bruno Mussolini, who admired him. They were actually friends, and he got a gold medal from him for diving from a bridge on the Tiber River in Rome. In the late 1930s, Leone Efrati was invited to the U.S. and started to fight some of the best featherweight boxers at that time. The peak came in 1938, when he took on National Boxing Association world featherweight champion Leo Rodak. My father lost in 10 rounds, but many of the spectators found the match unfair and that my father should have won. Leo Rodak was American, my father was an Italian Jew. That's how he was described in the newspapers. After his defeat, Leone hoped to continue his boxing career in the U.S. But the situation in Europe presented him with a major dilemma, his career versus his family. It has succeeded in 1939. My father was scheduled for a rematch with Leo Rodak, but the match never happened. In 1939, Mussolini enforced the racist laws against Jews, and all their passports were revoked. His family was set to travel to the U.S., but they couldn't. Although my father was successful and made some money in the U.S., he decided to return to the family in Italy. After he returned to Italy, Leone hid his Jewish identity and worked as a salesman. He couldn't even fight officially as his boxing permit was cancelled. But during the night, he used to sneak to the German train. The only reason he was able to do it was because the doorkeeper was his friend. My father wanted to train because he believed that in the end, the situation would return to what it used to be and he'd be fighting again. One day we walked down the street when two Italians, who were members of the fascist party, recognized my father because he was known as a boxer. They called the police and turned him in. After a couple of hours, we were brought to the detention center in Tasso Street, where Jews were detained and tortured. Leone and his family were sent to a detention center in Rome. Aaron had managed to escape the train, which deported his father and other Jews to the concentration camps. Leone was sent to Auschwitz and then to Ebensee in Austria. In the camps, Leone was forced to fight boxing matches in order to entertain the guards. According to one account, Leone found his death after he was forced to fight a heavier boxer. Leone won, and the guards who bet against him were mad and beat his brother. When Leone found out, he confronted the Nazi guards and was beaten to death. Aaron remembers vividly some of the last moments he had with his father. When we were in prison in Rome, shortly before we were deported, my dad talked to me and asked me, what's your name? I answered, Romolo Efrati. He asked me, what's your address? He also asked me, what are you? And I said, I'm a Jew. My father wanted me to say it out loud, that I'm Jewish, that this is my identity. 
What would have happened if Leone had won the fight against Rodak? Would he have used his status as a world champion to save his family? No one can tell for sure. But now Aaron and his family are continuing their fight to keep alive the legacy of the man who, just like in the lyrics of Bob Dylan, could have been the champion of the world.